Now, a total solar eclipse is currently sweeping across North America. Millions of people across the US, Mexico and Canada will be able to see the moon block the sun. In some places, the total eclipse lasts more than four minutes. Scientists will also be using the eclipse to conduct experiments to learn more about our closest star. Well, John Hendren is in Indianapolis, which is just about to experience totality, we understand. John, take us through what's happening there around you. Well, there's just a crescent left of the sun. We heard an announcement that it'll be about two minutes. Uh, and that the shadow has hit nearby Bloomington, Indiana. That's what I was just told over my shoulder here. Um, and so people are very excited. They know this is going to happen very quickly. So let me just take a moment to ask one or two people what it is that they're here for and what they're seeing. Kurt, can I ask you, what are you looking at? What are you seeing? How excited are you? I'm very excited. Never seen a complete total solar eclipse before and this will probably be the only chance I'll ever get. So I'm looking forward to totality, seeing nighttime in the middle of the day. And you're an amateur astronomer, so this is a big deal for you. It's a huge deal, probably one of the biggest deals of my life. So I'm very excited. Let me see if your daughter's willing to speak to us as well. Can we ask you, what do you think? I mean, have you ever, I wouldn't look up like that. Uh, what do you think of what you're seeing? It's remarkable. I mean, you know, you see lunar eclipses a lot more commonly, but something like this, again, it's once in a lifetime. I hope to see it again in my lifetime, but it's remarkable. It's a very important day, and we're, we're hitting... We're heading to point. And let me ask you, you work here at Butler, what do you I think? Do. Oh, this is spectacular. Anytime there's a spectacle to be seen, it's incredible. So getting to see you on the moments here, some beads around this moon, it's great. Thank you all for talking to us. And right now, as we speak, what we're seeing is the diamond ring effect, where there's a bright spark of light just before totality, and there it is. The sun has disappeared from the sky. It's something that happens on average in any one spot once every 3,000 years. I'm just going to let you enjoy this moment. We're told that star in the lower right is Venus. And John, we can hear the crowd around you there. I mean, for many people, this really is a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It is. I mean, I, I, I haven't witnessed this myself, and most of the people here I haven't, I've talked to haven't witnessed it. You can hear them whooping and hollering. I talked to a couple of uh, women from California and they said they would probably not live to witness another one. So there's a, an enormous amount of excitement around what we're told is about three minutes and 30 seconds of a complete solar eclipse here. Now we can see it on our screens here, but is it an eerie experience actually seeing it there in the open as it were, or, or is it just awe-inspiring? It's wild. There was a silvery light. Now it seems like suddenly darkness has descended. And it's so complete that birds begin to nest, uh, insects uh, begin to perform their nightly rituals. It fools Mother Nature into thinking it's nighttime for a very brief time. So you can imagine why uh, thousands of years ago it was terrifying to people to see this. And now that we understand that it's simply uh, an astronomical phenomenon that happens every once in a while, the fear isn't there, but the awe remains. And we can hear what sounds very much like a party atmosphere. And you can see... It is. Um, I don't actually need these glasses anymore during totality, uh, but everybody's got them just to be safe. But yeah, it's it's an incredible party atmosphere. Uh, people are celebrating, they're out here, there are food, they've brought their families, um, and people have come from thousands of kilometers away in order to enjoy this festive celebratory moment. And it's been going on all day, and when it's over, they're gonna be checking out of their overpriced hotels that are up-priced for this very event, because you know the totality is only about 160 kilometers wide. Um, 
and then they're going to be climbing in their cars and getting back on the crowded highways, and it'll take them hours to drive what normally would take uh, much less time in order to get back home to places close to here, like Chicago, Minneapolis, Milwaukee, other cities not terribly far away. And from the people that you've been speaking to there, why does this seem to capture the imagination so much, do you think? Well, there's just something freaky about seeing the sun simply disappear in the middle of the day. And it's, you know, it's, it's because of this odd phenomenon where the sun is about 400 times farther away than the moon, but the moon's about... Uh, I'm sorry, the, the sun is about 400 times the size of the moon, but the moon is about 400 times closer. And so that makes it just so that the moon can sort of cap out the light of the sun. And what we're hearing here is that that diamond effect has come back. And this is the reverse of what we saw earlier, where you see a glim, glimmer of light around that circle. So. And when this does eventually finish then, presumably the that, um, that people will that start to move away? Or, for, forgive me, John. Yeah, do people start to move away? Or, uh, we can see you getting brighter already <laughs> with your shades there. And it, it's happening in a matter of seconds. Um, my cameraman is going crazy trying to keep up with the lighting here. Uh, and we didn't turn on a light because we didn't want to destroy the experience for people here. But uh, it is just freakishly fast how soon the sun fades away and then comes right back. And this process of, of the moon uneclipsing the sun, the sun reappearing, will take another hour and 20 minutes. And yes, as you say, by then, Probably a lot of these people will be well on their way home. OK, John, we're going we're to leave it there. Tremendous stuff. Thanks very much indeed for that. Thank you. We're going to stay with us, though. Chris uh, Impey is Distinguished Professor of Astronomy at the University of Arizona. He joins us from Austin. Welcome to the program. So what has this been like for you? I mean, you're an expert in astronomy, but, but do you still feel that excitement yourself? Oh, absolutely. It's my, this is my seventh eclipse, which is not a huge number for astronomers, but it's more than the average person. And it doesn't get old. Um, it's a visceral experience because, you know, it's a very spectacular change in the midday situation to, for this, to, for it to be so dark that you would need a flashlight to walk around and to be so quiet and stunned silence by all the observers. So, yeah, it's spectacular, even for a professional astronomy. And what can scientists then actually learn from this, then? I understand there are experiments that have been taking place as we speak. Well, yes, uh, because of that perfect occultation, the uh, moon blotting out the sun, you can see the parts of the sun that normally would be blinded by the radiation from the disk, so the corona and the chromosphere, the outer parts. And even to the eye, just... 10 minutes ago, uh, not just the diamond ring, but there was a prominence. So uh, like a ruby ring, uh, a very red patch at five o'clock on the eclipse. And that's a prominence of the sun and the atmospheric experiments with rockets and planes are, are studying that prominence. That's high activity of the sun, the sun's weather. And how much does this uh, serve to remind us of, I suppose, just how small we are when it, when it comes to the totality and workings of the universe? It is. We're very small in, in a huge amount of space, but we're also very lucky because this coincidence, this, that uh, the two objects that are 400 times different in size that just happen to be 400 times different in distance, eclipses wouldn't happen this way. And because the moon is very slowly moving away from the Earth, just as the Earth is very slowly slowing down and the day lengthening, there won't be eclipses. You know, we should enjoy it while we can because in half a billion years, a billion years, there won't be any more eclipses. And I understand that even animals behave differently during, uh, during this. I mean, nocturnal creatures like bats and owls sort of wake up and start looking for prey. Is that the, is that the case? Absolutely. We saw that just 20, 30 minutes ago. The birds started looking to be roosting, and we have bats here in Texas, and so there were bats flying around that would normally not come out until dusk. So they were confused. Their, their trigger was set by the darkness. So yes, animals definitely get very confused. And what is the fascination of this, then, that grips us all so much? Well, throughout history, it has had an enormous effect. There were times in, in ancient uh, Greek times 
when the when the observation of eclipse not yet understood by humans caused battles to be changed and the course of history to be changed. Uh, so through history, it's had a, an enormous impact. And of course, it's always been mysterious until we knew the layout of the solar system until the time of Copernicus and Galileo. And looking ahead, I mean, if you've missed it this time, will you have quite a long time to wait until the next one? Well, it depends how well healed you are. I mean, in North America, you'd have to wait until 2044. That's quite a ways. Uh, but there's a solar eclipse somewhere on, on the Earth's surface pretty much every year. So you can see these maps at Goddard Space Flight Center's eclipse site. And so if you have the means, you can reposition yourselves around the Earth and find a location. And you could see one next year or the year after if you want. OK, we'll leave it there. Thanks ever so much for that, uh, Chris Impey. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, we say this uh, eclipse has been sweeping across uh, North America. We're going to have a look at some more pictures of this now. And as we've just been seeing, millions of people across uh, Canada, Mexico, the US uh, have been seeing the moon block the sun. And uh, well, in some places, uh, eclipses lasted more than four minutes. Scientists have been conducting experiments as well. And we can see <laughs> thousands of people in each area have been we're waiting for a long time to see this and experience what has been really a once in a lifetime experience and something that's been quite awe expiring for them as well.